Hello, and welcome to the Catholic Mama podcast. I'm your host, Christine Flynn. Thanks for joining me on this episode where I'm also joined by Olivia Shingledecker. She is a Catholic, uh, a student, a, co- a college, a current college student, which is why we're talking about this topic today. I'll get to that in a second. And also the host of the YouTube channel, Catholic Girl Talk. Uh, we're going to be talking about um, a co- Catholic communities on the college campus. Thank you so much, Olivia, for joining me. Thank you so much, Christine, for having me. I have always wanted to be on a podcast, so I'm super excited <laughs> you finally gave me the opportunity. Um, like you said, I'm a junior at Benedictine College, a Catholic liberal arts college in Atchison, Kansas, kind of in the middle of nowhere. Um, I'm studying philosophy and theology. I am also a certified FEM instructor. So for those of you who know about FEM, it's fertility education, medical management. So I teach women how to chart their cycles. Um, I also have a YouTube channel called Catholic Girl Talk, where we talk about faith, femininity, fashion, and friendship for young Catholic girls. Mostly that's uh, not really, I don't really do those frequently, but there's a lot of good content um, for small groups or high school girls, whatever. Um, And then I'm also beginning to work for a wonderful Catholic girls organization called Fidelis. You all can look that up, but that is um, one of the reasons I'm super passionate about sisterhood and true community, which is what we're going to be talking about today. Awesome. And if anybody is listening to my podcast who also listens to Pat, uh, Dr. Jim, which Pat, uh, who Pat talks to all the time on the podcast, is one of your professors. Oh, yes. Very <laughs> beloved professor. Yeah, <laughs> he was. I met him in person. Uh, I think it was last summer. He brought up his daughter along with him. And um, it, it, it was great. It was a great visit. So that's awesome. I, I know Pat likes that. But Pat, Pat talks to him on podcasts several times a week. So he must be fun to be around. <laughs> yes. Small, small world. I love taking philosophy classes from Dr. Matt and they're very um, like they stimulate my brain a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very that, engaging. Yes. Yes. The, 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 yes, I've, I've listened to some of the podcasts that he has done and I, I would as- agree with that assessment of his, his way, his mannerisms and way of speaking and teaching. So, um, you know, so I, I love that we're talking about Catholic community. I've had years ago, like one of my first episodes was how to keep kids Catholic in college. Uh, and I spoke with, um, the mother of five or seven, I can't, it's been a while. Uh, her husband is actually our pediatrician. <laughs> I just can't remember. Uh, it's been so long ago. And, but that's the only thing that I've done to talk about college. So I'm so excited to actually talk to a, a current student about, you know, developing this kind of community on campus, because really college has a really bad reputation right now for taking Catholic kids and pulling them out of their faith. Um, but good communities can do quite the opposite. Yeah, that's so true. I know uh, one of the things we talk about to incoming students is how here at Benedictine, um, around the world, most students lose their faith coming to college, but most people who come here uh, leave saying that they've grown in their faith. Uh, Why exactly? Uh, I'm not exactly sure, other than um, it's very, very Catholic, right? There's, um, There's all the resources for faith and sacraments, a lot of good theology classes, a lot of other people who are like trying to grow in their faith as well. So you have, like, first of all, I guess, good raw material to start with. I guess I don't have like an ultimate, like, how do you stay Catholic in college? Because it's, <laughs> it's truly up to, up to you. You know what I mean? To choose your faith. Like even here, you have to choose to go to mass. I mean, granted there's like three daily mass times and you can walk five minutes, but like you still have to make the effort yourself um, or make your, make the effort to like go to a Bible study or live with people of the same values as you. Um, Yeah. So there is intentionality, but it's also a very supportive environment here. So with, uh, yeah, that sounds like it. I've I've heard, I heard somebody say at some point, you know, if you're a cradle Catholic, you have to stop renting out your parents' faith and, and buy your own basically. Yeah. You you can't just stay in the basement of your parents' faith. You actually have to go out and and choose it for yourself. Yeah. It sounds like, yeah, in, in college, you're certainly given that opportunity to do that. Now about, about community though, I mean, you, you, you mentioned that this is a passion for you and sisterhood. Uh, when it comes to, you know, if you could dream up your ideal Catholic community or sisterhood, what, what would that even look like? Uh, well, it's so, it's so hard to like think of an ideal. Um, Cause I can just kind of speak from my experience. What I have is 
something so much better than I ever imagined that I would have had, I guess. So right now I'm living with four other women in an on-campus house. um, And all of us lived together last year with uh, three other girls. So there are eight of us last year in a very small space. (laughs) Um, And then the year before, a couple of us lived in a big dorm of 90 girls. Um, So it's kind of the, the community has gone from a lot of girls living together to now it's just the five of us. But what I've found is that um, we're not just friends. So there's like a difference between friends and community. I think, um, I was used to in the past, just, uh, having friends where like you would have a coffee date or something and you would like share your hearts and talk a lot, but it's like two hours, like every few weeks, you know, and there wasn't really anything like consistent or we weren't really sharing life together. Um, but from my experience with my friends here at Benedictine, I've noticed that we, we share life together. We share the common goal of growing in holiness um, and growing closer to Christ and being the best um, humans we can be. And there's just something so special about like all being on the same page and doing it all together. Um, And there's nothing separate about like sharing our lives and our hearts or like our work days and our fun days, like we all do it together. And I think that's like, to me, the ideal community is just like where you're doing everything together. Um, And here it's so easy because everything is so accessible. You can walk everywhere. You live Mm -hmm. with your friends. Um, If you want to drive somewhere, you usually have to borrow someone's car or so you have to go with them, you know? (laughs) Um, So I think living life together is the main thing that makes community so beautiful okay yeah it's funny you're saying that I just um I'm going through reading the bible again cover to cover and I'm reading you know each day I read a little bit of the old testament a psalm or proverbs and a new testament section and I just recently went through um went through in acts where we're hearing about the that a growing Christian community and where they did everything together and they lived together and how beautiful and and peaceful it was for them. And uh, it sounds like as you're talking, that's what it reminds me of is just (laughs) as, as I was just reading that a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, that's so beautiful. It definitely, it's definitely uh, hard too, because they, your friends or your community sees everything, you know, like they see your good days and your bad days. They know when you're stressed, they know when (laughs) you're happy, you know, uh, but the joy of the life lived together is like Mm. so incredibly beautiful. So, um, what, from these, this Catholic community that, you know, it seems it's interesting that it's, as you've gone through, have you been, you've been at Benedict in the past few years from the beginning? Yes. So it's gone from, okay. So it's gone from, uh, this large group, but it always seems like freshmen travel in very large groups. Um, yes. and then, and then as you, as you age through college, then it, um, you start to dwindle it down a little bit, but also I would imagine that helps with developing, um, so it, what, with the, the difference between having, you know, thinking of if this episode is shared with, um, girls going into college or, or going through their college years, um, what benefits did you see with like the giant group? And, and being around a bunch of girls versus this more intimate setting that you have this year? Yeah, so this is one of the things I love to talk about. Benedictine is one of our pillars is being a residential college, meaning that almost 100%, not quite 100%, but almost all students live on campus. <clears throat> Some live in the town, which is, of course, walking distance. Um, but when you're a freshman, you up until I think last year you were required to live into in a dorm that had community bathrooms and at first you're like ah why do I have to have a community bathroom why can't I have a suite but there is something about everyone from all over the country a lot of people most people don't know each other being thrown together in this space so I lived with like 90 girls um and you would see people in the bathroom you would like get to know people brushing teeth you would like just randomly walk down the hall and there was a door open and you just stopped to chat so really the first year of just putting yourself out there and getting to know a lot of different people um was so helpful in finding my friends um because while all of us are at a catholic college and have like very similar values and goals 
um, you're going to find some people that you're naturally more uh, attracted to or have more of an affinity with. Mm -hmm. Um, And then from there, um, we moved to a group of eight. So that was more, that was definitely the Holy Spirit because some of us, we didn't all know each other, but it was mostly just connections between a couple of us. Um, And somehow we were all thrown together in this little suite eight girls. It was a lot of girls, um, for a small space, but, but the two lessons I learned the most from that time was, um, our openness to getting to know each other, um, and our celebrating of each other. So we were all so we, since we didn't know each other super well, we took the time to get to know each other. Um, when we would come home in the evenings from classes, we would like talk, um, share stories. We were quarantined together for like a lot oh, of yeah, that's a long right. time. So <laughs> that was honestly my favorite week of memories from sophomore year. Um, but then we also celebrated what each other was good at. So things that I had felt insecure about that I loved, my friends called them out and celebrated them and were like, oh, we're so happy for you. Or look at how, um, you just come alive when you make videos or when you do these things. Um, and that was really beautiful. So I think, um, that really set the stage for this next year where, um, it's for my closest friends, um, and I living together. And then our other friend, um, is an RA, but she, she comes over here a lot. Um, and this year, what has come out in living in community is really the, um, just the realness and the rawness of like last year, it was very getting to know each other and very celebratory and really um, living for the other. And now this year we're, we're all like, you know, turning into mature adults, hopefully. And so it's, there's a lot of growing and a lot of maturing and a lot of hard things that we're um, going through and we're going through them together, uh, sharing about them, um, helping each other out, like simple, simple things. Like if someone's really stressed doing the dishes for them. So it's like learning to love in little ways this year. And also Hmm. being able to, um, help each other carry like our burdens and our crosses. Um, and then something that we're learning and trying to intentionally work on together, because we've talked about this is to grow in, um, fun, (coughs) fun, having fun. So, Cause a lot of times it can feel very heavy with just everything that's going on and, you know, all these women living together. And so we realized that we need to intentionally as a community, as a group, um, cultivate play and fun. So we went sledding the other day and it was just out of some of our comfort zones, but very incredible and bonding. So that's awesome. And that's just yeah. like a little overview. Of- yeah, no, that's great. That's great. No, it's interesting. Two thoughts came to mind as you were speaking, how easily if you didn't have good raw materials to start off with, and you were in a very secular college, this could all lead somebody to finding the wrong or uh, not a, a, not a very wholesome group to be with, <laughs> but in a, a great setting already where you have a lot of people who share values, but of course, then personalities mix, you know, in different ways that you have this opportunity And then too, it sounds like just as though, you know, a relationship for two people grow and deepen and become more, um, you know, either friendship just becomes more intimate or, um, you know, you're willing to share more with the other person or let them see more of you as time goes on. It sounds like your whole group has been going through that, which is a a beautiful thing to show that the community is, is growing and maturing. Yeah, for sure. So um, with, with this you know, if you have, you know, so you, you wound up finding, um, you know, th- through, you know, just walking through the halls or getting to know people in a very organic way, able to find a, a group of girls that you felt really close with. What, what advice do you have for a, a girl going into college? I mean, would you say do the same thing that I did? Yeah, for sure. If you're going to, like I said, a Catholic college where there's a good environment, like you said, um, I would totally recommend putting yourself out there like that. Um, If you're going to a more secular college uh, where you might not find people who have the same, I guess, values or goals as you, um, find like-minded people. So on a lot of campuses, there's focus uh, missionaries who have campus ministry and outreach, um, or maybe there's a group at a Newman Center. Um, And I would definitely say that 
that's a really good starting point. And like, it does require putting yourself out there um, because in order to grow, like you need to grow with others. And um, my professor, one of my professors always says like, show me your like four or five closest friends and like it will deter, it's, that's your future. That's who you are. Um, and it really does make a difference. Like all of my friends, we've all become more like each other. And so you want to be around people who are striving for virtue and holiness um, and living a good life. So I would definitely recommend putting yourself out there, especially in a community of faith. Right. To be, and yeah, definitely to be intentional because it's not just going to happen by registering for classes and showing up. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, there is something to be said about ultimately it is the Lord um, who ordains everything in life. Like in a sense, I didn't choose my friends, but I did make myself available to um, find them and to let the Lord lead us to each other, you know? Yeah. So um, looking ahead to say, I mean, we're, you're getting to the tail end of this year. <laughs> well, what do you, have you all decided that you're going to stick in the community as is, or is there, is there something else for senior year for, for you girls? For sure. We're, there's no question. Like, of course, we're going to live together. The only question is whether our friend who's an RA will live with us or not this semester okay. <laughs> or next semester. That's right. I, well, it, it sounds, I, I, I remember that the last two years, I mean, things get a little bit more stressful and the classes get tougher and, and a bit more intense. And then it feels like, you know, the outside world is getting, uh, as, you know, you're getting older. So it just, it feels, if everything feels um, more mature and, and difficult in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I would imagine that the, you know, having this community that you've worked to develop over the past couple of years helps carry you through all that. Yeah, for sure. It's totally something to fall back on. Um, and like it always, <clears throat> something I will say is it definitely requires intentionality. Um, even throughout, you know, we're, we're always having these discussions about, we always talk about like these really deep questions, like all the time. Um, but we're wondering, you know, when do you choose to do something intentionally? Um, and when do you just like, let it happen to you? And what we re what we've sort of like come to and talking about this is like everything that we have is given, right? Our friends, our community, the people we live with, like where we are at the school, um, those are like gifts given to us by the father, but, but that requires us to like take them and to respond well, meaning with intentionality. So amongst ourselves, we've found that we need regular communication as a household. Um, like every week we have a meeting and um, it's meeting sounds like, you know, scary, but really it just means we check in. How is everyone doing? Mm. What can we do for the week ahead? Like, how can we live better? Usually it's things like, okay, let's all make a commitment to like put our dishes away um, <laughs> or do our chores every Saturday, you know? Um, or we want to develop a habit of praying more together. So we set Wednesday morning prayer um, and some of us who are stronger than others at waking up We'll wake the other people up so we can all pray, you know? Um, so it's the little things, I guess, of being intentional that keeps the community going. But yeah, I would just say intentionality is also important. Yeah. Well, it sounds like um, having, having a clear understanding of developing these relationships is it's going to be so, uh, so helpful in the years ahead, you know, trying to navigate outside of college. Um, like you're setting your, all of you are setting yourselves up for success and it comes to relationships with communication, intentionality, uh, play, that's so important and having fun, not just, you know, getting the work done too. That's, that's, that is great. I mean, that's, you know, you hear often college can um, get the, uh, the accusation that it's not teaching like real life applica mm -hmm. applicable skills, but this is clearly a very applicable skill that's going to serve you for the rest of your lives. For sure. I think once you've tasted the goodness of living in community, you just like can't not have it anymore. And so I know that wherever I end up after this, I will seek community out because it's just so foundational. Yeah. So now what's this? You mentioned um, this, this uh, new work that you're doing. Can you talk a little bit about that before we wrap up? Yeah. So Fidelis is um, 
a community of women. They have groups all over the United States. This is something I participated in throughout high school, but they have um, sixth through 12th grade women meet together with mentors of adult women of all ages every week. And so <clears throat> when I was in high school, we started this at my parish and it was just a group of women at my parish. We would get together, um, watch a little video clip, talk about a virtue, pray together, eat together, um, play together. And, um, and then the, this is called a Fidelis chapter. And then they're everywhere all over the U S and then together every summer meet together for a big summer camp. There's also a guy's equivalent of this called Returnus, incredible program for forming men. But Fidelis is um, all about like this idea that in a generational community and mentorship and virtue, um, you need to grow in virtue in community, um, learning from women of all ages, doing it together, right? So I have started to help them on a national level just with social media and stuff. So it's a very simple thing, but um, really the heart of it is what I got from Fidelis, like during high school, when of course friendships are kind of difficult in high school, I was, um, every week I just looked forward to Fidelis in ninth grade. That was a really rough year for me, but I just mm -hmm. knew that every week I would like, I could count on my sisters to like, to give me, um, to carry me through, I guess, you know? So, so that's the reason it, Fidelis is so near and dear to my heart and why I've always been, been taught to seek out um, community with, uh, women as a woman. Like I've just known that before anything else, before, like, before I enter into a relationship or whatever, it's so important to have good, good friendships with, um, of the same gender as you. So, yeah. and I love, I love that you're saying across, good. yeah, across ages, age groups too, to get, mm -hmm. uh, we, we have so much to learn from, uh, women in all the generations. So that's awesome that they were able to do that. Yes, that's been so incredible for me. Um, it's actually been kind of weird coming to college. So I was homeschooled. And so I just was always around people of all ages. And I always would talk to the moms and, um, and at Fidelis, there was younger and older. Um, so here it's like, oh, everyone's my age. That's a little fun. You know, <laughs> I've never had this experience before. <laughs> Usually it's the opposite, but, yeah. but there's just something so incredible, um, about learning from other women, always seeking out mentors or someone you can, who's just a little bit ahead who you can learn from. It's yeah. just so important. That's great. That's great. Well, thank you so much, Olivia, for coming on and talking about this Catholic community in college. I know you said you're not doing um, the Catholic Girl Talk very much at the moment, but it's, it's you've had quite a few videos on there. So I will put a link in the show notes. Is there anywhere else? I, I can put a link to Fidelis as well, just so people can get um, a feel for the, the program. Um, yeah, that would be great. Check awesome. it out. Check out my YouTube channel if you want some content. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you again, Olivia. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's been a joy to talk to you and share my passion for community. Yeah, this is great. All right, everyone. Thank you. And until next time.